Hi kids, I am Auntie Mariana and my story today is about Carol the Cat and the Great Escape, written by Robert Lawrence. Once again, Carol is telling us the story. She says, Mary and John had gone out early in the morning. Mary usually comes home after a very short while, but today was different. We waited and waited, but no Mary. I climbed through the cat door to see if I could see her outside, but the yard was empty. No cars and definitely no Mary in sight. When I came in, Tiger was sitting there, not knowing what to do with himself. It was easy for me, as I could come and go as I pleased. But Tiger was stuck in the house. Tiger had an idea. Why don't we escape and go on to an adventure? Hmm, this sounded good. The only problem was, how were we going to get Tiger outside? I'll try getting through the cat door, Tiger said. Hmm, I wasn't so sure about that. But we had to try something. Tiger stuck his head through the door and that was as far as he got. I tried pushing him from behind with a heave and a ho, but all the shoving didn't help. We checked every window to see if Tiger could fit through the burglar bars, but that wasn't going to happen either. Then I remembered that Mary sometimes did not lock the back door. John was always complaining about that. So it was off to the kitchen we went. I jumped up onto the counter and I grabbed the door handle. (gasps) It swung down and we heard the door click open. Tiger used his paw to grip the door and pulled it. What do you know? The door opened. We were free. Once outside, we weren't sure which direction to go in. As we walked to the road, Nipper said hello with his yap, yap, followed a little while later by Roscoe with his woof, woof. We looked left and right and decided to go towards the big street with all the traffic. We were sure we would find something exciting to do there. As we came to the busy street, Tiger stepped off the pavement without looking left or right. (gasps) I grabbed his tail just as a truck came trundling along the road. Phew! That was close. I was used to the traffic, but Tiger was not. I had to explain to him the rules of the road. Before crossing, look right, then left, then right again. Then, if there are no vehicles, you can cross over. We decided to stay on the side of the road we were on and walked past a few shops. The green grocer did not look that interesting, nor did the clothing store. You see, neither of us eat vegetables and we don't wear clothes either. The next shop was the butchery. (gasps) Tiger's eyes went wide and he started slobbering as he looked at all the meat in the window. On the pavement, a man was making hot dogs. He looked down at us and said, Hello, my little ones. Would you like a piece of sausage? Tiger's tail said it all. It wagged from side to side so much that I thought it would wag his backside off. (sighs) Here you are, the man said, and dropped two sausages onto the ground. I took a few small bites at a time. 
savoring every morsel. Tiger, on the other hand, woofed down his sausage in no time at all. He then looked at me expectantly. Oh, well, I suppose it's more of a treat for him than for me. I pushed the sausage towards him and with one gulp it was gone. It was getting late and we decided to make our way back home. Tiger started off in the wrong direction. I don't know where he thought he was going. I turned him around and we headed on home. About a block away we heard shouting and calling, Tiger! Carol! Where are you? Tiger! Carol! It sounded like the whole neighborhood was out looking for us. Even Nipper and Roscoe were joining in. As we came closer to the house, Mary and John saw us and came running. Oh, there you are! We thought you were lost, said Mary. Lost? Me? A cat getting lost? Now I know there are some marbles loose in these humans' heads. Mary grabbed me up and squeezed me so hard I thought my bones were cracking. She kissed me all over. <coughs> I wish she wouldn't do that. John picked up Tiger, who gave him big fat licks. I am glad it wasn't me getting those wet yucky kisses. All the neighbors were happy that we were found and it was a big celebration. We were carried off to the house and given a few treats. And John said to Mary, You see, I told you to make sure the back door is locked. What if someone came in and stole the stuff? What? With Tiger and me around? <laughs> Never. This story reminds me of the following scriptures. It says in our Bible in Luke 15 verses 4 to 7, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. He leaves the ninety-nine in the wilderness and looks for the one that is lost until he finds it, doesn't he? When he finds it, he puts it on his shoulders and rejoices. Then he goes home, calls his friends and neighbors together and says to them, Rejoice with me because I found my lost sheep. In the same way, I tell you that there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who don't need to repent. John and Mary called all their neighbors to find Carol and Tiger. When they found them, they celebrated in the same way God loves us so much that he will never leave us out in the cold. He will continue to search for us until we return to him. And is that not a wonderful thing to know? God will never leave us or forsake us. And now it's time for me, Auntie Mariana, to say be blessed. And until next time, it's bye for now. This story is read by Mariana Lawrence with permission from the series Carol the Cat, written by Robert Lawrence and can be read on his blog, scribblelow.blogspot.com. Or you can contact the author via email, robert at highwinds.co.za for a free transcript. <laughs>